everybody welcome back to my youtube channel i'm showing you guys how to create this custom tie-dye stacked jumpsuit now uh, a lot of people have been wearing stacked leggings stacked this stacked jeans like that so i seen some inspiration and i decided to make these stacked legging sweatpants and if you want to buy something like this oftentimes it costs like $80 or like it's really really expensive so I decided to make to DIY it and make it affordable so that way you guys can you know try it out for yourself but yeah this came out super cute it came out exactly how I wanted it to I purchased almost everything no I think everything off Amazon so um, it's very easy and accessible so I'm gonna link everything down below and yeah if you're excited to see how I DIY this uh, jumpsuit just stay tuned and keep on watching so I ended up getting this small white men's hoodie and I believe I got the Hanes eco smart pullover hoodie um, as I'm looking now they don't have this in a size small but I'm still gonna link it because it was the cheapest one I only paid $15 for this while the other brands cost like 20 or more so I'm gonna link it down in the description box below just in case that they have this brand available at the time that you purchase it in your size and if not I'll also leave another link for another white hoodie that you can purchase um, it'll just be a little bit more pricey but as long as it's at least 50% cotton material that's important because you want that dye to really absorb in it so that's just a helpful tip then um if you want your sweatpants to be stacked unfortunately you do have to buy two pairs of the same sweatpants which can make this project get a little bit more pricier but a tip is that i actually purchased these sweatpants in the youth size so i could wear a youth large and just for your reference i'd usually wear a size four in pants or like a small in sweatpants so that's just a guide for you if you're thinking about getting youth as well but it helped me save on cost and these were only ten dollars a piece now if you do want to go ahead and get another size just keep in mind that you want these to fit a little bit tighter so if you have to size down than your normal usual sweatpants size then you probably should so that way they fit a little bit tighter so you get that stacked look and then I'm also going to be tie dyeing a matching face mask. So I have this white cloth face mask that I had previously from another project. If you haven't watched my how to tie dye face mask video, please go do that. You're also going to need like some medium to large size rubber bands to um, help scrunch up the pants and the jacket. And then I also use these tiny rubber bands to help scrunch up the face mask. Grit dye is my favorite dye to tie dye with and I got this super pink color off of Amazon. I like to use this sauce container to hold my dye and water mixture. You're gonna need a thread and needle to help stack the sweatpants and you need to use white thread so that way it can be dyed with the pants itself. You'll need scissors to cut the sweatpants and also cut the thread. I got these little butterfly patches off Amazon and I'm just going to use them to customize the jacket and make it unique to me. And um, this comes in all different colors so if you order the set that I put in the description box, I'm sure it'll have a color of what you're going to tie dye the outfit. So you're going to take one pair of the white sweatpants and lay it out on the floor making sure that both legs are over each other evenly. Then I'm going to cut off the bottom to where I want the stacked part to start. These pants right here are going to be like the main structure of the sweatpants so this is what you're going to add the stacked part onto so cut off about this high or lower if you want it to be more stacked higher if you want it to be less stacked 
I'm going to put those pins that we just cut to the side and grab that second pair of sweatpants. Again, you want to make sure that these sweatpants are laid out evenly and that each leg is overlapped on top of the other, like exactly the same. Then on these pair of pants, I'm going to take my scissors and start to cut right below the crotch area, like this. Then you could save these top portions as shorts, but we don't need it for this project. So here is the bottom portion that we're going to be working with to stack onto the other pair of pants. With these two legs that I just cut off, I'm going to cut the bottom portion off where the seam is at the bottom. And I'm just going to go a little bit higher depending on where how high I want these to be stacked. This is just going to make sure that it is seamless when you sew it onto the other pair of pants. So I'm just going to take these two legs that I just cut off and flip them inside out so that way the seam is showing. Grab the first pair of sweatpants that you cut off and lay them out on the floor nice and even like this. Take one of the pants legs that you flipped inside out and put the full pair of pants inside the hole of the leg that you cut out, making sure that the fattest part is towards the top and the skinniest part is towards the bottom. Then you want to make sure at this small opening at the bottom that both pair of pants are lining up equally and that both seams are matching each other. You definitely want those end seams to be like exactly the same before you start sewing it together. Then once you have it lined up equally, go ahead and um, start sewing them together but make sure that you're sewing it around the perimeter leaving an opening at the leg hole you don't want it to be closed because then you won't be able to put your leg through so make sure you're sewing it open um, all around the perimeter and making sure that um, both pair of pants are lining up equally as you're sewing them together I like to start from the seam because that just helps me make sure that it's um, that that part is going to be um, the same because that's crucial that that lines up equally.
Now once you're done sewing, you can go ahead and cut off that thread and then you'll be able to pull down the pants like this. So that way they're extended and you'll be able to have that stacked look. This is how the seam looks after you have sewn it on and it will be barely noticeable once you have the pants on and you stack them. So I went ahead and did the opposite leg off camera and I sewn the hole together like this and then I'm just going to pull them down so that way you can see they're extended as well. So now I'm going to start prepping the clothes to be tie dyed. I would put a plastic bag or plastic trash bag underneath your workspace so that way you don't get anything damaged but I just go ahead and spray the fabric so that way it's easier to scrunch up and to be able to uh, wrap them up in rubber bands so I spray the hoodie until it is damp and then I always lean towards doing the crumple tie-dye effect because it just is the cutest to me and it's the easiest and it usually always comes out to be pretty good. But I, I start in the center just crumpling up the fabric and there's no wrong way to do this. It's very, you know easy to do and it's no right or wrong you literally just crumple up the fabric like i'm doing here and then once you get a certain part crumpled up enough i just secure it with a rubber band and then move on to um continuing to crumple up the rest of the fabric And here is how it is all looking once the entire hoodie is crumpled up into one ball. And then it's the same concept with the sweatpants. You just want to wet it with some water so that way it's easy to manipulate. And I already did one of the, one of the legs off camera as you can see in the ball right there. But um, I'm going to do the other leg here. You just wet it with some water and then I start crumpling up from the center until I have the entire leg in a ball. Once I have both the legs and the waistband crumpled up, I just take one rubber band to kind of bunch them up into one giant ball so that way it's easier to work with. Lastly, I'm just crumpling up the face mask so that way um, it can be matching with the jumpsuit. And same concept, the only thing different here is that I am using small black rubber bands to tie it together and keep it into a ball. Now I'm going to be taking my RIT dye and my sauce container to start mixing together the dye and water. Now the more dye you put in and the less water is going to be the more darker the color is going to come out onto the 
sweatsuit but just from my experience you if you want it to be pink like mine like the same color pink that i had you only need just a little bit of the super pink dye and majority of it water it goes a long way so make sure keeping that in mind um the less water you put in the darker it's gonna be and the more water you put in versus the dye the lighter it's gonna be so I'm just going to get a bucket and start to dye this sweatshirt and um, I'm just going to cover all the parts that's white. Make sure that it has dye over it and you may have to like add more dye and water to the bottle as you go because it does require a good amount of it to make sure that it's all covered in dye. Once it's all covered, I go ahead and put it inside a plastic bag so that way it can sit and soak up that dye. I'm going to be repeating the same steps with the sweatpants as I did the hoodie, just making sure that I cover all the white areas. Um, and then once it's all covered, put it in a plastic bag so that way it can sit to the side and soak up the dye. If you decide to do the matching face mask, then just do the same thing, cover it in dye, and then put it in a plastic bag to soak. I let this soak in the plastic bags for about six hours, and then after six hours, I'm just gonna cut off all the rubber bands like you see me doing here. Then I'm going to rinse out the clothes um, with cold water until um, I feel like most of the dye is out of the fabric. Then once all the dye is out of the fabric, go ahead and throw it in the washer and then dryer and then take them out and you'll see your results. Here's how the outfit is looking after I took it out the washer and dryer. It turned out so cute and this is exactly the color that I was going for. It looked darker when it was dying but this actually came out perfect. Because I wanted to customize the sweater a little bit more, I wanted to add a butterfly patch and all I did was take one of the larger pink ones and place it at the top center of this jacket and ironed it on for about, about 20 seconds and then it was pretty much stuck on there. And here are the final results on how they look on. I absolutely love how this turned out and I will actually wear this. This reminds me of something you could buy in the store for like 80 to even up to $100. But I did it myself for a more affordable price and I absolutely love it and I hope you guys are loving it too. Thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it please remember to give it a thumbs up also please let me know like different things in the comments down below that you would like me to tie dye or diy i love making stuff like this so if you give me ideas i'd be happy to make a video on it so yeah and most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that way you'll be notified every time that i post a video and you'll never miss an upload thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye